Hello friends, I'm Dr. L and welcome to Dos Palabras Explained. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this short story by Isabel Allende, look at the background information, um, look at how to write about it in Spanish so that you can do well on your AP test and give you an explanation in English so you can understand it and talk about what the two words might possibly be. Stay tuned to the end. All right, La Autora Isabel Allende. La época postmodernismo, la forma cuento corto y prosa, en tema relaciones interpersonales. So the author is Isabel Allende, and we'll look at, take a look at how she incorporates herself into the story as a metaphor. And the time period is postmodernism, we'll look at some elements for that. It's in the form of a short story or prose, and the theme that it can relate to is interpersonal relationships. Right. Isabel Allende es una autobiografía o una metáfora de su vida. Ella ganó the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Ella nació en Chile y ahora vive en California. Y ella es una autora o una persona que vende palabras. So let's take a look at the Isabel Allende's background information a little bit more in depth. So this story is an autobiography but it's in a different format. It's a metaphor for her life. So she's a great author. She's not just gonna give you factual information, but she set it into a short story to tell about her life and see if you can make the connections. She won the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She was originally born in Chile and had to move to California for political reasons that her family was involved with. And so she's an author and you could also consider that somebody who sells words and that's what the protagonist in the story does. All right, más información sobre postmodernismo. So, empezó en los años 1950 hasta el presente. Es sobre la vida real, como realidades en la televisión e entrevistas. Um, tiene puntos de vistas diferentes y hay más representación de minoridades y Mujeres. So the postmodernism time period begins in about the 1950s and continues into the present. Um, it has aspects of real life. So if you think of reality TV shows, and there's each person has an interview, each person has a different point of view that they want to give. And now we have more representation with minorities and women as authors and also as protagonists. All right, El Cuento Corto. Belisa, o Isabel, crepusculario, vende palabras. El coronel necesita un discurso para ser presidente. Con el discurso, el coronel recibe dos palabras gratis. Las dos palabras hacen un hechizo sobre el coronel. So Belisa is the main character. And look at if I divide her name in half. And if I were to divide the name Isabel, Isabel in half, um, how that's just a different form of Isabel. So notice the connection between Belisa, the protagonist in the story, and Isabel Allende, the author, and the connection that she's making. So it's a, again, it's a metaphor for her autobiography. And um, so Beautiful Twilight is kind of how the name could translate, sells words. And there's a colonel, a military colonel that needs a speech because he wants to be the president and he doesn't want to do it in the usual way of a dictator. And this has some connections to what has happened in the past in Latin America, but he wants to win the hearts of the people with an incredible speech, but he doesn't know how to read or write. So he needs the services of Belisa Crepusculario. And so with this speech, he receives two secret words. And in just a moment, we'll take a look at a theory about what the words might be. But these two secret words have a, uh, un hechizo, they have a spell that they cast on the kernel. All right, so a practica might be desarrolla el tema del poder en el cuento. So see if you can develop this theme of power in the story. So if you want to give that a try, um, pause the video and see if you can write about the story and I'll give you my short response in just a moment. All right, desarrolla el tema del poder. Para empezar, Belisa empieza sin poder, 
y tiene que salir de su tierra. Belisa gana poder cuando ella aprende leer y escribir. El coronel empieza con poder porque es militar. Y el coronel no tiene poder sobre las dos palabras al fin del cuento. So this theme of power kind of think about who has power and who doesn't in the beginning of the story and who has power and doesn't have power at the end of the story. So at the beginning of the story, Belisa doesn't have any power. She doesn't know how to read or write. Um, there's uh, bad circumstances in her homeland, droughts and floods, and she has to leave. But in real life, Isabel Allende has to leave because of a political situation in Chile and her family. And then Belisa, as she learns to read and write, she gains more and more power, and eventually that's how she earns a living. So much so that the colonel needs her services to become president. And so at the beginning of the story, as a military person, the colonel has power. He has strength, he has soldiers, he has weapons, he has money that he's stolen. But then at the end, with the spell that the two secret words have cast over him by Belisa, um, he's lost all his power. All right. Desarrolla um, el tema de po poder. Con las dos palabras, Belisa tiene poder sobre el coronel. Hay un cambio de poder. Ella avanzó. Y le tomó la mano. La moraleja, las palabras tienen poder. El, el bolígrafo es más poderoso que la espada. And so at the end, Belisa has all the power over the colonel. So there's a shift in power from who has it at the beginning of the story and who has it at the end of the story. And then the very last line of the story is, but she, or Belisa, advances and takes him by the hand, showing that now she has all the power. And the moral of the story is that words do have power. And that's why I like to start off the Spanish literature course with this story to show that importance. And then there's a saying in English that is, the pen is mightier than the sword. So maybe you want to discuss that and see if you think that's true or not, and see if you think of some examples that make it true, or maybe some examples that wouldn't be true. Entonces, la pregunta, ¿cuál, ¿cuáles son las dos palabras? So, te amo. Um, supo al punto que estaba frente al hombre más solo de este mundo. Um, so, this is one theory that people have, and uh, Isabel Allende officially says there's no correct answers because the reader can come up with his or her own story or own interpretation, but many people think that it's I love you, but in Spanish, two words, but in English, it be three words. And so uh, the line from the story that indicates this might be true is that she knew that she was in front of the loneliest man in the world. So a lonely person would be motivated by love. He had all the power, but he didn't have love. He had loneliness. And so she knew that by saying that, that would cast a spell over him and then take control over him. All right, gracias por mirar. And um, what I like to do with my class is, um, since we don't know exactly what happens at the end of the story, it's kind of open to the reader's interpretation, is think of a alternative ending to the story or how you think your own version of the story might end. Anyways, go ahead, give that a try. Adios, ciao.